What's up guys? In this video, I'm going to show you three strategies that'll make any lawyer think twice before coming for your assets. These strategies are designed to thwart BS lawsuits from taking your investments, your personal residence, or your business. Now, before I get started, if you want to learn more about how to properly structure all your real estate investments and protect your assets, you can register for our free tax and asset protection live event at the link below. All right, now before we get into that, I want to talk about what a creditor can collect against because that's going to really play into how we set up structures for you to avoid attorneys and creditors and snoops from getting into your actual affairs and, and taking those assets. So here's some things that they can do. Number one, they can garnish your accounts. So what does that mean? If you have a bank account in your personal name or you have a bank account in the name of your business and they're suing their business, a way for a creditor to get that cash is they'll just apply for a garnishment on that account and the bank will actually hold those funds in, in, uh, in abeyance for that creditor. Other things they can do, if you have real estate, they can lien your real estate. Not only can you get, they get a post-judgment lien, sometimes they can obtain what we call a pre-judgment lien against your property. So if I was suing you and you have property in your own name, I could move for a Liz pendants, or which is essentially a lien on your property before the lawsuits even finish. What does that mean? Well, you can't sell, you can't refinance the property. If you did try to do one of those, more, more importantly, if you tried to sell, the proceeds would be paid over to the court. They could also foreclose on your assets. So if I get a judgment against you, I can then move to foreclosure and take these things. So here's what we want to do. We want to put together a plan and use strategies that make A, number one, you appear worthless because no one wants to go after somebody that does not have assets. So we want to look at strategies that when someone's uh, looking at you, say they're uh, typing up your name, say, hey, what does Clint own? Well, they don't see anything in my name. Or if they were suing my business, what is that business own? Again, you're not going to find assets in the name of the business or what you're going to do. Your business is going to look like it's fully indebted because that's another strategy as well. I'm going to share with you is how to make it appear is that you owe so much money. Step in line. I'm not worth going after. So let's break this down. Let's first start with how to protect your business. So if you've got a small business or maybe a medium sized business, one of the number one mistakes that I see people make time and time again is they keep a lot of cash in their business. Now, maybe you're saying, well, I need to keep that cash in my business for business operations. I get it, that does happen. But here's some things I want you to think about when it comes to, to protecting your business. So let's say I had this corporation here. It could be an LLC, it really doesn't matter. So here's my entity. And inside of this entity, let's say it had $400,000 cash. Well, why would you leave that money inside of your entity? Because by leaving it inside of your entity, if something goes wrong with the business, they're going to sue and try to collect this. So what you should do is distribute out, let's say 300 of that, we'll pull out of the company, put into my personal name, and then I'll move it over here into a separate LLC. So think of this as your banking entity. So if you're running a business, what I suggest you do is you always have a banking entity set up that holds your cash that you're going to be using in your business. And that's where you should be parking it. Don't leave the cash in your business. Similar if you have equipment that you use in your business, maybe you have uh, delivery trucks or things like that, vehicles, don't leave those in your business because things like that, creditors are gonna wanna come after if they're suing your company. So by putting the assets over here in the LLC, the cash, what you're setting up for yourself is this strategy right here. So now once the cash is in there, then what you can do is you can enter into a line of credit agreement with your existing business. So in this case, what I would do is I'd enter into this line of credit for a million dollars. And when I say a million dollars, what I mean is just pick a number out of the air. It really doesn't matter. You don't have to have a million dollars inside of that limited liability company to use this strategy. Because what I'm trying to do here is make it appear as if my company is fully indebted. If somebody's looking to come after me, they're gonna say, wow, his company, it owes a million dollars to this other limited liability company. Now, what's key about that as well is when you set up this LLC, set it up in Wyoming so they don't see your name attached to it. So now once I enter into this line of credit, I'm gonna put, a, I'm gonna put debt on my company of a million dollars. And the way I'm gonna fix this so people will see it is I'm gonna file a UCC1 financing statement against my business. So my LLC is gonna file, think of it like a mortgage against my business for a million dollars. Now, here's some uh, points that I want you to consider. People will tell you, well, if you do that, you try to go out and get a traditional loan, no one's gonna loan your company money. I know, 
I can release it at any time so I can go out there and get traditional financing. What this is, is a smoke screen. By filing this lien, I call it a friendly lien against my business, I am telling the world at large, if anybody's looking at me like a creditor saying, hey, yeah, I want to take this case, we'll go sue that business. This is my retirement plan. Well, think again, because when they run an asset search on your business, it's going to have this $1 million lien recorded against it. Reality, it's just a smokescreen. You don't owe it. I mean, it's you, right? You owe yourself money. Wow, how bad can that be? So for business owners, one of the best strategies you can implement is called a friendly lien between a Wyoming LLC that you set up, that has, you put your cash in there, and then uh, you put that UCC one against your business. And remember, if you need the cash, because people have asked me, well, Clint, how do I get the cash from my LLC to my business when I need that money? Write a freaking check. That's all you got to do or transfer the money online. It, there's, it's not rocket science here. You're in control of both entities. Now, the second thing I want to teach you how to protect to keep it away from there is your investment accounts in your savings. How do we protect our investment accounts and savings from creditors and from aggressive attorneys? Simple. Just like we're talking about with your business, you take those accounts and you get them out of your name. Now what we want to use here is a strategy where we're relying upon state law, a state that grants us great protections that prevent our personal creditors from getting after our assets. And one of the mistakes I saw a couple years ago that was made by an individual is that he'd entered into the settlement agreement with the bank for a deficiency judgment, and he had all this cash in his personal checking account, and he thought he was going to be secure. Well, the bank went after him for this deficiency judgment, and they garnished his personal account. He went to his personal checking account, tried to use his ATM card, and it declined, declined. He called the bank and said, what's going on? They said, well, we're holding your funds for your creditor. That should never happen happen to you. And the way you prevent that is you take your personal checking account, your savings account, you get it out of your name. You don't want to keep all that money in your own name. You want to put it in a limited liability company. Again, use a Wyoming LLC. In fact, if you have a business and uh, you have a, this could be the same entity right here, you could use it for yourself and your, your business. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a Wyoming LLC and I'm put all my savings inside of here. And if you carry a big fat checking account, stop, put, put most of your checking money in there as well. There's no reason why you should have it in your personal name. And then you'll be the member and you're going to be the manager of this LLC. So you have, you have total access to, to, to the funds at any time. Don't worry about taxes. It's completely tax neutral. It's just another account that you create, but it's not in your name. It's in a limited liability company. Now, if somebody came after you and they said, well, how much do you have in your personal checking account? Well, I have uh, $14,000. This is the only thing they could collect on. Your brokerage account would be inside of here. So my stocks are inside of this Wyoming LLC. My savings account is inside of there. And then whenever I need them, all I got to do, write a check, take the, take the assets out. So this is how you should protect your savings to keep it away. Now, next thing, how do we go about protecting your personal residence? Because, you know, that's an asset you have. You have a lot of equity that's built up in there. Again, if someone got a judgment against you, they're going to take that judgment, record that judgment in the county where you live. They'll go down the county recorder's house, record the judgment. You try to sell, you try to refi, that creditor is going to get paid off. So when it comes to protecting your personal residence, again, we have to get it out of your name. We don't want your name associated with the property. So the way we protect personal residences here is we use what's, what is referred to as a personal residence trust. I'm going to call that a PRT. So you set up a trust. And you don't have to file this with the state. This is a private document. We set up this personal residence trust and I put my, I deed my personal residence to there. I'm the beneficiary of this trust. You want to use a nominee trustee or, or what I would use is that same LLC that I set up over here for my savings. I'll make that the trustee of this trust. And the reason why I'm doing that is because if someone were to look at title to that property that I just showed you and they look at my personal residence, they'll see it's no longer in Clint's name. It's in the name of, you know, the Green Box Trust Care of Funky Town Limited Liability Company trustee. All right. None of that points back to me. So if somebody dropped a judgment, they get a judgment against me and they, they record the judgment in the county where I live it won't attach to my property because my house is no longer in my own name. This is a very 
simple strategy for people to protect their personal residence. You create a personal residence trust with an LLC, a Wyoming LLC as its trustee, deed your property in, your problems now are, are minimized such that you could sell, you could refi that property. And again, those proceeds get paid to the trust, not to you, so they don't go to your creditor. Now, the, the last item I want to share with you, I think what you should look at protecting is your investment real estate. So how do we protect that? Well, you've watched my other videos on this channel. You know I talk about using limited liability companies. But the thing is, is that, the, yes, that protects you from what happens with your real estate, and it does protect your real estate from claims that are brought against you because that's why we're using LLCs. But what you can also consider is taking it one step further because if I have a piece of property, okay, right here inside of a limited liability company, let's say this house, uh, it's located in California, this rental property, and it has $700,000 equity in that property, that rental property. Well, that's an attractive target. If I have a disgruntled tenant and they want to sue, uh, they're going to come after my LLC because they see a big fat payday here. Because when you look, what you would find, if you looked at title, you would say, hey, there's a first with, let's say, Wells Fargo, and the amount of debt on that property is $200,000. The value of that property is $900,000, so we know there's $700,000 available in that lawsuit if I were to be successful. Well, your job should be to make it appear as if there is no equity available to a creditor. So how do we make that equity disappear? Well, obviously, you can go and try to get an equity line of credit from an investment bank that's willing to loan on an investment property. Probably not going to happen, or if they did provide you with an equity line of credit, it's not going to be for the full amount. Maybe they'll go up to 60%. So rather than talking to a bank about this, why don't you become your own lender again? Just like we did with the business. Remember that LLC, that Wyoming LLC we were talking about? Well, here comes the Wyoming LLC to the rescue one more time. This Wyoming LLC is down here. It's going to file a line of credit. We're going to get a line of credit and we're going to file a deed of trust against that property for $700,000. So that gets recorded against the house. And if someone's looking at that property in that LLC and they're going, how much equity is available? Well, they're going to see the first with Wells Fargo for 200 k Then they're going to see a $700,000 lien or second deed of trust from this obscure Wyoming LLC. The reason I'm saying use Wyoming is because Wyoming doesn't collect any information on who the members are, who the manager, uh, managers are in the LLC. So it provides you anonymity. These strategies that I just shared with you, they are tested, they do work, but where people can screw this up is when they set up this, this Wyoming LLC or this LLC over here to be their banking entity, they do not use a jurisdiction like, like Wyoming, which protects their identity. They set it up in their own state. And so when someone pulls a search on that entity, they say, oh, it's Clint's house, uh, Clint's LLC. Oh, I see what he's doing. He's, he's putting this uh, deed of trust on his property to make it appear as if the equity's uh, been, been borrowed against, when in reality, it probably hasn't. So we don't want that to happen. So, so to break this down into recap, what have we done? We're creating one Wyoming LLC right here, right? And that Wyoming LLC, it can, it can file a UCC1 against our business. All right, we've got uh, rental real estate LLCs over here, okay, where we have our property. It can file a deed of trust against our rental real estate LLC. This LLC right here will also hold our savings and our investment accounts inside of there. And then to protect your personal residence, you can put that over here. If you wanted to, you can even make this a trustee of your personal residence. There's so many different ways we can uh, spoke so we can pull off of this LLC, but these are strategies that we've been using for years to help our clients protect their assets. If you want to learn more about this in detail, I want to invite you to our tax and asset protection event. Uh, you can click on the link below to register for that event. I can tell you, this is an event myself and my partner, Toby Mathis, we teach, where I go in real depth deep into limited liability companies, strategies like this, using land trust, personal residence trust, corporations to run your business, to run your real estate investing, and how these types of entities need to be modified based upon different areas of investing that you may be interested in. And then the best part about it is after we cover that, we go on to the tax side. And we're going to answer all your tax questions and show you how you can reap the benefits of owning real estate, running your own business, and put a ton of money back in your pocket. 
And the thing about it that really impresses people about our tax and asset protection event is that not only do you get to listen to myself and my partner Toby teach this event to you and dispense this information, you get to get your questions answered. That is, we're going to have attorneys on there, tax strategists on there, answering your tax and asset protection questions while the event's going on. Guys, if you haven't been to it yet, I highly encourage you to join us when we teach this event. You'll get a ton out of it. It'll be the best Saturday you ever spent.